guess what? Ten Commandments. Staying on the safe side of the mountain we're going to talk about this morning. I want to take you back to the year of 1860 when Wells Fargo was searching for drivers. They had busted a new route through the Rocky Mountains and because of the narrow rocky trails they were losing a lot of coaches. So they need, well, you lose a coach, you lose drivers, right? Well, they were losing. They were losing. So there were a group of men about to be interviewed sitting in the front of the office and one young man, the rest of them were older gentlemen, all bragging about their ability to drive a team. How they can set up a six, they can set up an eight, and they can drive those mountain passes, how they can they can even slip a wheel off the edge and and survive it. And this young man's listening to all these old timers and he's looking at He gets up and he walks to the guy that's going to be doing the interview and he says, Yeah, I want to withdraw my application. And the guy said, You want to withdraw your application? He said, uh, Well, why? I mean, wait a minute. Whoa, we're not doing this. What? And, and the kid said, Well, he said, I've been listening to all these guys. How close they can drive to the edge and, and save the coach. And he said, if I drove for you, I would drive as close to the mountain as I could. And the interview said, get in my office, I'm looking for you. Get in my office, I'm looking for you. Amen? Amen. 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 Come here. I have to wonder why so many of God's people try to walk so closely to the edge so closely to the edge of the world, trying to hold hands with the world. i got to wonder why there's such a tendency to push the limit instead of staying within the comfortable bounds of the hand of God. What is the temptation that draws us out to that edge? Amen? Woo! Well, I wonder. Young girls, they try to dress as much as the world they can, as spandex pants. And Listen, ladies, there's some ladies who don't belong in spandex, okay? I'm just saying. They got tops that are as short of waistline as they are up top. And I got to ask why? What moral compass are they using that 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 draws them or allows them to walk so closely to the line? What well, what is it that's happening in here? What is it that that's that's causing them to do that. And, and there's plenty of other examples of edge walking. I mean, how about us men? Storytelling. How much of this story can I tell and not raise an eyebrow? Just how, how much of this can I share without raising some consideration? And the question is, why do we have to consider such a thing? I mean, if we ask ourselves, should I say this? The statement should have been, don't say this. Don't say this. What is it about the edge that draws us so near? What power does it have? The mountain side of the road, listen this morning, is the safe side of the road. Amen? The mountain side of the road is the safe side of the road. Write that down. Put it on your refrigerator. Because it's true. I remember way back when we did a VBS, back in 2020, 2020, I think it was. No, it wasn't. 19... It's the early days of the church. We did a VBS focusing on the Ten Commandments. There may be somebody in here that might remember. Um, there's probably a bunch of us in here today. You've been to, been to Bible school, or you've been to Bible studies. You've listened to pastors. You've uh, gone to Sunday school. 
Um, yet how many of us know the Ten Commandments and can recite them? How many of us know the Ten Commandments and can recite them? They are the heart of God. They are the heart of our Father, God. You want to know His heart? Read what He wrote. They are the heart of God. These are the boundaries that God have, has set for us, and they're the boundaries that keep us from drifting to the edge. They're designed to keep us, to make us safe, to hold us to the mountain. Amen? That's good. We're going somewhere. The fact is, I've heard him called, I heard the Ten Commandments called the Tender Commandments. You ever heard that? Yeah, well, it's just me. I heard it. I want to show you why. So this morning, we're going to take a trip back in the OT. I need you to turn to Exodus. Bibles, if you would. We're going to Exodus chapter 19. We're going to start with three verses. Exodus chapter 19, verse 3. Father God, your word is not void of power. It's not unwilling to go out and achieve. And so, Father, we send this forth in the name of Jesus, Father God, to accomplish your task. We pray your, pray your blessings on it in Jesus' name. Amen. And Moses, if I say Moses, I love that name, Moses. In the beginning, Moses, Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now therefore, what's the therefore, therefore? Because of that, now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of of Israel. These are the words you shall speak. Now flip over to chapter 20. Verse 1. And God spoke all these words, saying, and everyone reads with me, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Listen, God has brought you out of the land of Egypt. Amen? Everyone in here who has accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, God has brought you by His Son out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. That's Listen to what he says. It's a therefore. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I... The Lord your God am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless 
who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all of your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. God has a reason for giving us these commands, these parameters. They're there for a reason. They're not just a list of thou shalt nots. We hear that often in the church. I don't want to be a Christian. You can't do nothing. They're not just a, 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 a list of thou shalt nots to, to keep us in check. In fact, they could be called the thou shalts. These are the things you will do by not doing them. The thou shalt. Because God has given us these boundaries to keep us out of harm's way and away from death. Again, away from the edge of the mountain. To keep us tight to the mountain. That's what they're there for. God, who's he's a father, amen. Does he want his best for his children? Are we them? Then he wants his best for us. Sometimes God, God's best gets right smack in the way of our want. But it remains his best. And he wants his best for you. He wants his best for me. Away from the edge. Close to the mountain. We look at his commandments as a we, we can't look at his commandments as, as as something to chain us down, as something that keeps us in bondage, because they actually lead us into freedom. They're not about bondage. They don't hold us back. They don't harm harm, harm our progress. They don't ruin our good time. Thank you. They protect. They protect why he gave them to us. Think back at our own children. Denny and I were setting down rules. We weren't trying to put our kids in bondage. We weren't trying to keep them in jail. We thought we knew better, or we did know better, and we wanted to guide them and direct them and, and keep them safe, keep them from trouble. We were in a little bit of snaky country. I told my kids, when I tell you to jump, it is not a debate. I need you to jump. We're not talking about it. When I tell you something, I, I'm not debating. I am the Father. I'm trying to protect you. I tell you not to do something. It's not to spoil your fun. It's to keep you safe. God is our Father in the same way. That's what that's what Exodus was saying back in chapter 19. Now that sounds like a loving Father, doesn't it? Is that a loving Father? Well, you know, He gets poo-pooed all the time. And the world tries to accommodate the Christian because we didn't like the R movies because we knew we shouldn't be there. So the world says, okay, we'll make them PG. 
FEG stands for pretty good. Come on, people, stay with me, will you? So they, they try to compromise the commands. And we also learn to compromise the command. That's why, that's why Jesus said, if you've done it in your heart, it's as good as done. Trying to show us, in fact, that, that we're incapable without His Holy Spirit. We're incapable. And yet we can do some pretty mighty things out of our own determinations. Yet without Him, we can't refrain from those things that try to lead us to the edge. Be conscious of His presence. The Ten Commandments are not about limitations. They're about relationship. And relationship is what God's all about. He said, don't forsake the fellowship, right? And, and the fellowship, fellowshipping of the saints isn't just a church full of people. It's fellowshipping. It can be one-on-one, -on -one, two on one, three on one, doesn't matter. But he said, you know, you need the fellowshipping. Why? Because when we fellowship, fellowship with other Christians, they too help us stay to the safe side of the road. Amen? If we're fellowshipping with Christians, not just Christians who say they're Christians. But those who know and will to do the will of God then they're going to help keep us in check. Get away from the edge. What are you doing out there? Get away from the edge. Relationship is what he's all about. When we read the Ten Commandments in the Word of God, we find what? The first four are relationship to God. That's it. Okay, we're going to start off. We're going to start off with me and you. We're going to have us a talk. This is the way it's going to be between you and me. First four. He follows up with six that are about what? Everybody else. All the relationships that we have with one another. He brings that into play also. And he said, this is how you got to treat one another. This is what it's all about. This is what I want out of you. They all tie together, don't they? Throughout, throughout the Bible, it, it continues and continues to be relationship, relationship, relationship throughout the Word of God, a cry for the people of God to relate, to have a relationship, not only with Him, but with one another. We good? Amen. Woo. Relationship with God, relationship with one another. From Genesis to Revelation are shown intimacy with God. You want it. How our relationship with Him, how our relationship pours with Him, excuse me, pours over with one another first is our relationship with him. Jesus summed it up in Matthew 22, 35. Do you have that? Well, the scribe asks him a question about which is the greatest commandment, right? Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? The lawyer wasn't talking about the Big Ten here. He was including all of the laws. There were civic laws, ceremonial laws, rabbinic laws. And when you tie them all together, they had an estimated 613 laws. And this guy says, what's the greatest one? Estimated 613. I don't know how many there really were, but there's a whole pass of them. And this guy's saying, well, Jesus, what's the greatest? Of the, Amen. Time all together. I smell a trap. I, I smell, I smell a trap when I heard that. Which is the greatest, Lord? You yeah. have. Mm -hmm. We're waiting. Take it, Jesus. Jesus answered that question with one word. What is it? Love. 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 Jesus said to him. You shall love the Lord your God. Jesus said to him, 
I can't, you know, this is happening. There's people all around. This, this lawyer asks a question, and Jesus says to him, like he didn't turn around and say, Love is the... No, he said, Everybody else got it, but he started with him. Started with him. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Everybody raise your hand that can do that without the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. This is the first and the greatest. And he goes on to say the second's like it. You should love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all of the law and the prophets. He said love, love conquers 613 of them, pal. See, we can't love God. We cannot truly love God and offend in any one of those. So it's the love of God that keeps us. Amen? It's the love of God that keeps us, holds us, holds us to the mountain. It's the love of God. It all flows from the love of God and the loving of God. Amen? Relationship, relationship. God. If my relationship with God is a mess, then most probably my relationship with everyone else is a mess too. And the same, same. If I, my relationship with everybody else is a mess, it's probably a mess with God too. Pretty hard to have that loving relationship with God when you're out of love with everyone else. But we do, don't we? Oh God, they don't understand Amen. That song, me and Jesus, right? Me and Jesus got a good thing going. I don't need you. I don't need fellowship. Just me and Him. The contrary is true. We need our fellowship. My relationship with God is a mess. God is a mess. I guarantee you I'm a mess too. The Holy Ghost is probably going to say something like Matthew 22, 37. Yeah. Yeah, this is what he's going to say. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, to God, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and give a gift. Woo! Man, I could hear a pin drop right now. And it sounded like a log hitting the floor. Man, that hits you right in the right in the gut, doesn't it? It's almost it's almost like God saying, "Don't come to me until you get that straight." Got to get that love thing straightened out, pal. Go to your brother. Go to your sister. Make it right. As right as you can. You can't make everybody right, but you can sure offer rightness. You can offer righteousness. You can offer right standing. Doesn't mean they're going to take it, but you go to try to make it right. And then come back. He didn't say, No, I don't want to see you for the 14 days. You're unclean. Go out and take a bath in the Jordan. I, 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 no, he said, Take care of that, but, but then come back. Come back and I'll receive the gift. We're good. We're golden. Oof. Ten Commandments are a compass and they show us which way to go and how to maintain a safe position on the road of life. Isaiah 30, 21. So it is that if we if we turn to the right or the left, we're gonna hear a word behind us. We're gonna hear a word behind us. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way. This is the way. Walk, walk this way. Whenever you turn to the right, you turn to the left. God isn't going to let us go over the edge. If we're walking with Him, listening to Him, there will be that voice to bring us back. To bring us back. And if we listen,
listen to them, we won't grow off the road. We won't lose the coach. We won't lose our life. Amen? Woo! Stay with me. Glory to God, I'm telling you. Wow. Hmm. If you want to know how to love, understand it. Understand understand God. If you want to know how to love, understand God. Understand His Ten Commandments. Read through them. They're not a hammer. They are His voice. Giving us direction. Giving us instruction. Now, Pastor, if the Ten Commandments are a compass, where does the compass point? Where does it take me? Well, folks, it takes us right into the blessings of God. It takes us right into the blessings of God. Remember that they're not there to keep us out. That's our choice. They are not there to keep us out. They are there to hold us in. To not miss the blessings of God. Well, Pastor, we're not under the law. We're under grace. Amen? Okay. Amen. I agree. That's why he gave us Romans 20, 8, 20. 320 in the Amplified Bible I read for no person will be justified made righteous acquitted and judged acceptable in his sight by observing the works prescribed by the law for the real function of the is to make men and be of yeah not mere perception but acquaintance with sin which works toward what yeah yeah you see where God's going with all this this was all laid out there before Jesus even went to the cross on our behalf all been done for us repentance, faith and the holy character the, the commandments make us aware of our sin we wouldn't know sin if we weren't told of it. And because of them, we know that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Everybody? Yep. Yeah, look to your neighbor, tell them that's you. Yeah. We are freely justified by grace and that through Christ's redemption. We good? Amen. When we come to Jesus by faith, we're under the new covenant. That's true. Jeremiah prophesied it. Jeremiah prophesied it. He said, the word would be written where? In your heart and in your mind. You don't have to go very far for the instruction and the direction of the Lord. He's placed it in our knower. We will always be aware. What is that cartoon? I do it. I get a whooping. I do it. It's worth the whooping. It ain't worth the whooping, folks. Don't do it. Don't do it. Ten Commandments. Our Father shows us His heart, shows us His personality, and He gives us His boundaries. Why? To keep us within His blessing. I don't know why God's not blessing me. Well. Where are you? God isn't looking for people who are going to walk as close to the edge as they can. To brag at how close they can get but not fall. How many cuddles can I can I get until I and and, and still not step over the edge? How much, how much hate can I have in my heart and not, and not step off the edge? How much bitterness, how much envy can I carry within me and not be approaching the edge? Answer, none, none. Jesus comes. When we come to Jesus by faith, we're under that new covenant. He's looking for people who want to stay close to the mountain. Yes, He is. He wants people who will rein it in, who will, who will hug the hub to the mountain and not drift.
drift over the edge. You see danger. I don't want to live on that edge. I did for a lot of years. I know all about the edge. Fell off it a couple of times. Okay, a few times. Several times. Several times. And it's a long way to the bottom. It's a long way to the bottom. I don't I don't want to live on the edge like I did, like, you know, as close to the world as you can be without being destroyed by it. Don't you want to live by the rock? Huh? Don't live by the rock, Jesus, where it's safe. Follow his tracks. Safety of the mountain. I need to ask you today. I'm just trying to be in my obedience. I, I, I just I do need to ask you today. How close to the edge are you walking? How close to the edge are you walking? Are you mindfully being kept by the hand of God? Or are you walking in places you ought not be walking? Or with people you ought not be walking with? I am a stretcher of stories. And I can get where I don't belong really, really quick. I know there's plenty of you in here who are the same. Don't look at me. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. Don't, don't do it. I want to tell you today, it's not worth the risk. Don't, don't, don't take chances with your eternal soul. Do not take chances with your eternal soul. Let's pray. Lord God, your word says that all is every one of us falls short of your glory. That the wages of our sin is death, but you've given us this free gift of eternal life. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Father, you have made a way where there was no way. Provide us counsel provide us safety. Your blessings are bestowed on us daily. Your mercies new every morning. And you are quick to restore. Father, when we come to you in a personal relationship and bear our hearts to you, our struggles to you, you are there. You have never turned us away, although we may have turned away ourselves. Do. You are there. David said, man, I can't go to the depths of the sea, the, the highest mountain. There's no place I can go. Every place I go, I find you. Wouldn't that be us, Lord? And Jesus, you said that you tell us the truth. That no is going to see the kingdom of God unless he is born again, ever. So I ask you all today, is there anyone here that desires to begin a new life today, who desires Jesus in their heart? You don't know Jesus in your life. Okay, today, 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 today. You don't have to come to the altar. I'll let you slip your hand in here. Is there anyone here this morning has found themselves walking too close to the edge? No hand.
hands in the air on that one, I find that spirit of reluctance in the name of Jesus. Tell you friends, we all make mistakes. And we all we all flounder. We all struggle. Every one of us. That person sitting next to you is no different than you. They stumble. They fall. You stumble. You fall. We're all on this road of life, and God is just desiring this morning to awaken an awareness within us that there is an edge on this road that you do not want to go off. That it leads to destruction. And I want to keep you from that. If you don't know the Ten Commandments this morning, look them up. I gave you the address. Look them up. Find the heart of God for you. And I'm not telling you memorize them, but know them. Read them, know them, get them down in your gut so that, that when you, you come close to that line, you will hear, Thou shalt not, but you shall back away. So that when we approach the things that are an abhorrence to God, we will hear the words, Thou shalt back away. I shall back away. We get too close. Back up. Back it up. Away from the edge. Pull yourself away from danger. And God says, when you do, I assure you. Not will not only will you move closer to me, but I will help hold you. My parameters be your parameters. Let the mind of Christ dwell richly within you. Let it be written on your heart. Let it be written in your mind. Let us be quick to recall an uh oh. Back away. Back away. Father, thank you this morning in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I thank you that there were saints in this Bible. Oh, Moses and, oh man, that whole gang, Father, they had to live all this thing in order that we might be instructed in it. Father, I think when I get to heaven, i got to apologize to all them guys. But I am grateful to you that you chose to use their life to enhance mine. And that, Father, you would use my life, in fact, these lives that sit here before you today in the same way. That you would use every one of us in this place in the same way that we might be an encouragement to those who come next, to those who come behind. We'll be forever grateful to you in that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'll tell you what, God bless you, everyone. When you go out that door, stay to the mountain. I'm telling you, do not go off the edge. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Give somebody some sugar before you get out of here today. I mean it. God bless you.